Welcome to the DLR webcast. I'm at ILA 2010 Space Pavilion together with two really interesting guys. One is Carsten Preusche, he's from the Robotics and Mechatronics Center of the DLR, and the other one is Justin, the space robot, and now you can guess who is who. Mr. Preusche, uh, for what kind of task was Justin created? Justin is a prototype of a service robot for space, and the mission would be to repair, refuel or deorbit satellites that are malfunctioning or well out of uh, order. So uh, we can obviously see that he is a kind of a torso, has no legs, no wheels whatsoever. How will he get where he has to do his job? Well, in space it's easy. He will be mounted on a satellite so he could fly around, so we don't need care for wheels or legs or whatsoever. And is Justin an autonomous system or is he remotely controlled? Well, of course, the, the long-term goal would be to have him fully autonomously operated. But currently, especially in space with very complex tasks, we use a technology called telepresence. So we have an operator on Earth, well, standing here beside us. Well, he will be on Earth while Justin is in space. And he could see what Justin sees and feel what Justin feels. And this is the important thing. So when I get this correctly, then there are sensors like the cameras, for instance, in Justin's head. And um, they send the pictures to the guy operating the robot. And also you have like feedback sensors in the hands so you can uh, feel textures or movements that you do with the remote arms. Exactly. So we have two cameras, so we get a 3D image, so a stereoscopic view of the surroundings of the scene. So the operator has the depth information and we have force and torque sensors in the arms, in the fingers. So we are measuring the interaction forces and can, for example, well, measure or see when a screw is tightened or not. So I'm really sure that everybody here at ILA and everybody watching the webcast will have one question in mind. Is that hard? Well, it's a hard in terms of uh, what the technology behind that. But our goal is to do the interface as naturalistic, as intuitive as possible. So, generally speaking, everybody should do that. Because the goal of, the, of such a system would be that the satellite constructor would do the repair on the satellite and not the robotic expert. I happen to be a hobby satellite constructor, so uh, would you mind me trying out the system? Yeah, let's give it a chance. Okay, let's get over here directly. This is really cool. I'm plugged into Justin and I have a crisp and sharp 3D picture. Also, I can move his arm and trying to be gentle with this guy because I bet he costs much more than I can earn in my entire life. It's, it's really easy. I get enormously controlled feedback on my movements, whether the movements of the arm or the head. It's really not only a fantastic tool, but also an, a great toy. I try to shake hands with this DLR scientist and it works perfectly. Thank you, this is great. My God, I wish you could try this out. Unfortunately, it's reserved for real scientists and real reporters for the DLR. Now I'm trying to say bye-bye together with Justin. Um, maybe kind of a waving goodbye like Queen Elizabeth would do. Goodbye. So glad you were watching. Thank you. This was a DLR webcast.